Uh, hi, my name is Anna Maria and my EPQ title is How was the aesthetic development of early Soviet music shaped by political ideology? Um, so it's about the relationship between composers and musicians and the political regime in Soviet Russia um, because obviously there was a lot of shall we say, tension, a lot of pressure to convert certain artists and writers to conform to the political doctrine. And I was interested in the ways that composers were able to kind of deviate from the prescribed style of the regime and how that then affected how people responded to the regime. Basically, just the idea of music sort of taking a stand against tyranny I just is quite a sort of romantic idea that I was interested in and I thought that this would be a good case study to explore that. Well, I'm really interested in the history of the Soviet Union. It's one of the topics that we cover um, in A-level history. Um, but also, I've got a passion for music, and so I wanted to combine the two. Um, I stopped taking A-level music, so I figured that this was a good way for me to take my interest in classical music and expand it to a, yeah, um, outside of my normal lessons. I think it was definitely organisation, that's something that I struggled with initially, but I think I improved as time went on, because unlike most other things that you do at school, there's no kind of immediate time limit. You know, when you have like an essay to do for homework, it's you do it in a week and then that's it, whereas this is such a long process that it's quite easy to lose motivation and forget to do things. So you need to keep setting yourself tasks and you need to keep yourself motivated and have a lot of self-discipline. Um, which is something quite challenging when you're not used to it, but it's also something really, really important, and it's a skill that you need to develop in you know, higher education and just in general. So it was good in that sense. Um, I've learned a lot about the way that, I mean, in sort of basic terms, in the, about the way that I research and the way that I write. Um, I think I've definitely improved in terms of finding sources, analysing sources, and I'm quite a perfectionist, so my tendency at the beginning was to want to read everything and just like write about every single factor of this quite um, complex topic. Um, so obviously I knew that I couldn't do that. And so in terms of organisation and having the confidence to kind of cut down and say, no, this is enough, I'm going to move on to my next section. Um, that was a skill that has really helped me a lot with my other um, school coursework. And so I think that just in terms of general, like how to structure a uh, long piece of writing um, it was really good for that but also research and other, other skills um, I think I definitely would it's been a real growing process I know that at the start of the year I had no idea what I was doing I had so many different topics that I wanted to explore and then by the end you've come up with you've really developed a, a real kind of complex frame of knowledge in a certain area that you're inspired by um, and that knowledge has translated itself into a, a really large piece of writing and a lot of effort's been put into it so I think that as a piece of work it's really there's nothing really like it um, on the A-level sort of just in your A-levels in general um, it is a lot of work and it does take a lot of self-discipline but I think it's definitely worth it and especially if you're going to go into something research-based in higher education it gives you a really good kind of flavour of what that's going to be like and how you can improve because I know that if I were to do it again I would change a lot of things about how I approached my topic um, so that's mainly what it is it's just a learning experience and yeah it's good <laughs>